talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big hey. shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, yeah, Madea. Whoa, Madea. Nothing, y'all, yeah, Madea. What's I'm going? here. Okay, I'm just checking. Yeah, she in the building. Check it, man. Hey, man, we got my boy Bello. What's in up? The, what's up? Is it, is no, it's it always, always Bello. Yeah, always Why Bello. Why is it always Bello, though? It's always with a Z, because the word Bello. It's a. It comes from an African language. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh hell, so he not, deep. You say not this sure. Deep. If you have a name, you need to research it to <laughs> know exactly where it's from. This nigga so, deep. And what, you, it, and what it means? Exactly. It means Lord's helper. So Ooh. always Lord's helper. Boy, you got to stand on that. Helper. Oh yeah, I stand you got to on stand it. on that. I stand on it. How long have you had that name? And how long you been helping the Lord? Since really, since I started rapping. You, you know. got to help the Lord. How old were you? Shit, it was high school. You, uh, two, 2010, 2010 was 21 now, so 11 years ago, about 16. So did you give yourself that name or somebody gave it to you? Well, my, my homeboy, he rapped too. Uh, he was looking up names. You know, we was like, what are we going to call ourselves? Blah, blah, blah. You know, whoop de whoop. And so he came, he came, he was like, Diallo Ease. He was like, I found this other one, like Sabello. Sabello, I was like, shoot, I kind of like that. You know what I'm saying? So I went with that Sa Bello, but then I took the Sa off. I like you know. Sa Bello because nah. it's different. I mean, yeah, but, you know, I just went with Bello because, uh, you know, my dad was, like, best friends with Big Mello. So, okay. uh, you know, oh, okay. he was like, shit, why don't you just be Bello? It's like Mello. You know what I'm saying? Everybody used to just say, <laughs> okay. nobody used to say Sa Bello. They used to just be like, hey, yo, Bello, Bello. So I was like, shit. So where you, where you from? You What part of town you from? I'm from Houston. What part? Out. Well, shoot, born south side, you know. Okay, Mama south stayed side. in sunny side, dad stayed in Harm Clark. So, you know, out there south side, two eighty eight, both so sides. You, you 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 good with it. They they say you yeah. produce a little bit. You get you reproduce? Yeah, I make a few beats. You make a few beats? Yeah. But but is you good at it? Can you make hits? Yeah, I can make hits. I can make hits. I like chopping samples and stuff, you okay. know. But you know, my boy Ronnie Spencer been telling me, you know, you need to get some real instruments in there. So, but he telling you the truth, you know, yeah. we, you know, because at the end of the day, everything, what goes around, come right back around again. Yeah. So you got to be ready. You got to be able to shift. No doubt. Yeah, you got to be something to where you can move in any way. You know, I, like I always say, if you if you meet one of these professional uh, athletes, they don't just do one thing. They do about three, four different sports. You know what I mean? You got to be able to shift. No doubt. Right? Yeah. So, so what, what? What's going on with you far as uh, with your music? Because you're an artist as well. Mm -hmm. how, how, what, what's your latest music that you got coming out? Uh, well, the ladies, we just dropped the um, the Young Die Young. That's a project that's out now on all streaming uh, platforms. You know, it's kind of like a comp compilation album, but, I, you know, I got a lot of production on there. Harvey Love got a little production on there. I got a few songs that's just my singles on there. I got a few songs with... Uh, the group that I was with, a and S, you know, we got a lot of music out that's on the streaming platforms and uh, SoundCloud and whatnot, you know, so got a lot going on. And, you know, I got a uh, project I'm working on my first my first solo album, you know, what I'm saying hopefully by this winter, you know, if not this winter, it's going to be sometime next year before the summer. Well, how, how are the visuals for uh, Do you have any visuals with that yeah, project? Got, got a few few visuals from the young die young. Well, two. One with swinging and one with a song I got with Ronnie Spencer called All In. And All that's the in. most recent one, yeah. yeah and and I, what was the process of going through making that? Did, I mean, being a young man, you know, OG, a legendary Ronnie Spencer, how yeah. was that process in the music with that? Because it's like bridging the gap, you know what I'm saying, with the way he brings a legacy to it. What did what what did you learn from the experience? Cause that's all that's knowledge right there. Oh yeah, well, I learned. I learned. I'm still learning from the experience because that experience has led me here. Okay. You see what I'm okay. saying? So I'm still learning, but like initially what I learned from that initial experience is just how how professional he was, how he came, he did it. He did it in my garage. You know, he laid the vocals in my garage. We didn't come here to no grand studio or nothing, but we laid the vocals where I make my beats at. You know, he came and did that, you know, and I the love off of that because look where he be at. 
Yeah, yeah, you know so, what I'm saying? Yeah, so he ain't have to do that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's just like then he just gave me a little game, you know, and every now every time I see him, give some game. So I just take heed and I'm taking I'm just taking everything in. It's I can't give you one thing that I learned from that. Like you just gonna have to see what I learned from that. You wow. feel me? So it motivated you. Yeah. Take you into the next level. So now that that's happened, did you? It made you take things a little more serious. Yeah, you know, because I was at the point like I've been doing this, you know, since I was in high school. You know, it's not that I took it as serious as I did after high school and high school, but like you know, you still put in work. You go do these little bullshit shows or whatever, and you meet whoever you meet these BS people or whatever. Then like you. You kind of like gassed out, even though I'm still young. Everybody like, you young, you young. But I'm like, shit, I'm kind of unmotivated. You know what I'm saying? You still, you going through the motions. It's easy to say you young, you know what I'm saying? But you, they're going through the motions. You see what I'm saying? So you kind of getting tired and exhausted. You don't want to do it. You trying to figure out what you can do to make you successful, you know what I'm saying? By the time you 32 or, you know what I'm saying? So it's frustrating sometimes i know that you know the young people don't know it but it's the same thing that a writer go through when they have writer's block you know mm-hmm. sometimes people don't make it through uh at their artistic uh career uh because they get frustrated because they're not moving the way they would like to move or being where they would like to be yeah. so you know how important is family to you oh family is the utmost importance you know probably the number one you know the reason why i do this music Stuff is because of my dad, you know. Okay. And so, like, my mother, she always been there for me. You know, like, I had both of my parents pretty much all my life. So, like, they instill family, you know. Right now, the family not as well put together as it was back then when great-grandparents was alive and stuff like that. But, you know, it's family is still. It's always the oldest one who keep the oldest people who keep the family together. Yeah. But y'all do know God is big enough for the job, right? You right where mm-hmm. you're supposed to be. No doubt. At the end of the day, God will make a granddad and make a grandmama around you if you just, you hold on to his unchanging hand. No doubt. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times we, we'll look at the cup half empty because mama gone and grandma might be missing or grandpa might not be there. But there's always fill-ins, man. Yeah. And just know you always got your heavenly father as well. No doubt. So don't ever, don't ever think that you by yourself. Yeah, look over the shoulder. You'll see, yeah. oh, you'll see legendary Ronnie Spencer. You'll see ECEO. You'll see different people that God put in your life to fill those spaces for you. You right. You, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a dope thing, man. If you really look at it from a realistic standpoint, uh, he got you every time. You right. <laughs> <laughs> no so doubt. so That's what? It. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you good. So, um, whereas the music is concerned, did you get an ear for the music from your parents? Um. I would have to say so, because you know, like just I music. The first, the first songs that I recall, like reciting, you know, that you first learn and you can say the words back, is like Houston songs, like "Wanna Be a Baller," stuff like that. And this stuff that my dad was listening to, and other songs that you know he was part of the Wasness. So they had songs that I, Big Steve, and all that that I used to sing back, you know, while I'm riding in the car with him and stuff like that. So. It was that, then also like a East Coast, you know, my dad like East Coast music and just like Houston music. So y'all yeah, would have to say it came from, from okay, from my you dad started, mostly. from you started being um, um, doing producing. Um, what is the biggest mistake you have ever seen a producer make? Mm. Whether it be yourself or someone else, you don't have to say who. Um, well, I have to say. Uh, selling themselves short on on their product you know um selling a beat if you sat there and you made you made this beat this beat took you you perfecting your craft and this beat took you an hour hour 30 minutes you shouldn't sell that beat for 40 dollars unless you you feel it's worth 40 dollars that means you selling somebody some how much should a beat stuff. like that go for mm. Hundred, three hundred dollars. You know, at the, like if you just starting out, like somebody like me, I would sell somebody a beat for three hundred dollars exclusively. You know, that's because I I don't have much credits. I can't say I did a beat for this whoop de whoop whoop whoop. You know, but if I can say I did a beat for whoop de whoop whoop whoop, 
you know. I don't know, man. Like I said, you got to have self-awareness, first of all. And, and your value can be what you want to make it to be. Yeah. And you can shop it around, too. You can push it out there on social media platforms for whatever. I'd put it out there for 1000 or 1500 You never know what God can do with what you've done. Yeah. So I think, I think a lot of times we just shop the wrong way. The most important thing is that you don't devalue yourself on those higher platforms where you don't know what could happen. So I shoot it out there yeah. for 1500 You might get a call from somebody, you'll be like, damn, I didn't... I didn't know my worth, but look, I'm worth more because most of the time people don't feel like they're worthy. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Most of the time because of what we've been through and the people we've been around, we dog down our our demeanor. And we shouldn't do that because you could be the dopest MC that I heard thus far and we never find out because you never shop it on that level. Mm-mm. Man, push it out there for two grand one time. Let's see what happens. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> it ain't going to hurt nothing. Yeah. Let's see what it do. Be shocked somebody. <laughs> somebody going to say, man, not only that one, man, I want you to make me one once a week. You're going to be like, man, he told me that. Yeah. He told me to go hard, go big, or don't even go at all just one time. And you'll be sub- you'll be amazed at what God will do for you. No doubt. You will be totally amazed. You got to think bigger. If you want bigger things to happen, if you want to see big things happen, then you got to make some big changes in a major way. In order, order to do that, you got to go from selling beats for 300 to 3000 and see what happens. No doubt. That feel good, right? Yeah. yeah. I, need to, <laughs> I need to know your top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Top three, Man. dead or alive. That's a hard question. Give me yeah. one. Number one. Number one. Your number man, one artist of all time. It's going to sound like everybody else. Come on. Tupac. Tupac <laughs> was the realest. I see Tupac. Devil Rock. Third nigga too. We yeah, die. Yeah. Two. Sure. Number two. If I had to give you another one, I'm going to say, uh, I'll go ahead and give you Kanye West. Uh, and for number three. Number three. Number three. Uh, I guess just because it's late. You know, recent, you know, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey you know, Hussle. What about Mo3? You know, I, I didn't get into him. You never was into him. Too. That guy like that just right left now. for you. You know, he did that yeah. outside. Yeah, I, I didn't get into him, you know, you know, peace be upon him. But I didn't get into him until after his death. Wow. You know, and, you know, I'm still not just all the way into him, but my partner, you know. What do you think about that guy getting killed like that in the middle of the highway on th- high, Interstate 35 like that at 1155 in the middle of the day? Man. It's like a like a movie scene. Seen in the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like Never a had movie nothing scene. happen like that. Do you like? Well, how, well, how yeah. do? Where do they do this at? You know. Back in the days, Wild Wild yeah. West. Yeah. yeah. Shooting it's in wild. the middle of the street. <laughs> it's wild. It's like a movie scene. And, you know, I'm. I don't know what the brother was going through, and you know what you know what was going on, but. Yeah. Do you feel like? Um, uh, see, because I met Nipsey also. I, 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 I used to hang out in Cali. Or I seen him in Vegas. And um, dope dudes, man. Never met Mo3, but uh, do you believe in uh, Illuminati? Do you think people are being sacrificed for to grow? <laughs> Sell your soul type of thing? Uh, well, yeah. Oh, no, uh, you do? Yeah, I'm not going to say in the direct sense of Illuminati, but yeah. You know, Illuminati is the cover up. That's the key. That's the cold word. But oh, yeah. what is the what is the word? The word is shit the, of the higher powers. You know okay. what I'm saying? Because it ain't no Illuminati. They gonna pitch it to you, Illuminati, or all these symbols like it's Jay Z in them. But it's bigger than them. You wow. know? Wow. It's bigger. Speaking than of Jay Z, do you listen to Jay Z? Oh yeah. I that's one of your top artists. Uh, yeah. You know, I got a lot of inspiration from Hope. I got songs. That wasn't on one the, of his uh, top. And it's top three though. It wasn't in my top three. No. Wow. It is in my top three is also off of um morality to me. Okay. And you know so, who else wasn't in the top three? And what they stand three? on. Who? Pimp C. Damn. Was in Houston. I hadn't, in, got, I hadn't got a Pimp C. He today. was not I got UGK in, earlier. Yeah, I did. Not in his top well, three. I, pimp, I'll be honest the pimp with you. is one of the coldest, the realest. Uh, I'm in H Town right now. Let's go and let me let let y'all hear it for real. Pimp C cannot be duplicated. There is no, will never be another person to stand up for the South like he did. Nah. So I don't care if nobody don't pick him. You ain't got to. <laughs> it, what, what's already understood don't even have to be said. We know that he stood for us in a way. He went out, you know, swinging for the South. If it wasn't nah, for no the doubt. things that he stood for, we would be looking real crazy down here. No doubt. Yeah, he was. He mended relationships before he died he he it, it, it wouldn't be no uh uh um 
it wouldn't be no Slim Thug and uh, Zero uh, right now uh, a mm-hmm. friendship. Yeah, it's some things that he did. Yeah, he, he also mm-hmm. spoke on, uh, I believe, T.I. and Lil Flip that made things come together in a way to where they can't sleep at night and not think about Pimp C said we need to get our stuff together because he influenced both of our careers. Um, not only him, we can keep mm-hmm. going. Jay-Z and him even had to respect us on another level because Pimp C wasn't just going to let you take and do him any kind of way. Yeah, so right. when you look at these guys, this patriarch, Pimp C, and you say his name, you should pretty much just have a moment of silence because for the simple fact that because of the way he did in the South, if it was not for him, there was a lot of things that people wouldn't respect us on the level that they respect us on right now today. Yeah, I agree. That was good stuff right there. Right here in H-Town. I agree because my, my top three, you know, it also can't, you know, because I could just spur it off. I just give you like what comes to my head first, really. Already. Yeah. Man, I, I, I tell you, I gave you that spiel because, you know, it needed to be said. You know uh-huh. what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. So <laughs> when you think about uh, the way that the South is looked at from uh, uh, from uh, these 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 uh, Vlad TVs, uh, the uh, the different uh, people that you see on these platforms, do you feel like they, they, they respect the South? Um, uh, Breakfast Club, uh, no, Hot 9-7. I don't, I don't think they respect it 100%. You know, not really, because they, they kind of keep it in the box, you know, um, as far as, like, the the slab culture and all the, the lean and everything like that, the drink. Do you, you know. th- what, about the, what about the mumble rap thing? Do you think that was something that was uh, a legitimate way to speak on Southern uh, uh, hip-hop? Or do you think that uh, the mumble rap thing was a, a shot at uh, mm-hmm. Southern artists? Um, I don't take it as a shot because I don't do that, but... I can see why people would say that, but at the same time, I'm like, shoot, you can't, you can't throw out the baby with the bathwater, you know what I'm saying? Because just because them niggas start doing that up, up there in Atlanta or wherever, we ain't start doing that down here. Because I, I don't hear, it's some artists down here that do that, but I don't hear a lot of artists out here in Houston, me personally, that's on some mumble rap. Well, we call it mumble rap now, but, yeah. but, but before that... Um, B Z uh would would never play Pimp C them records, but but Pimp C said our records always go go, we always sell out. Yeah. So they was they, they was doing it then. It's and it, it was a it was a black it was a blacklisted type deal, man. So yeah. when I look at it and I see how they done it, I'm just like, okay, if they, they was doing it then, these are are, are, are elevated ways that they do it through saying, Hey, that's mumble rap. We they still out selling them. Yeah. These mumble rappers is I sell them. The, you can't yeah. I sell me goes. That's, you you, you can't true. do it. And the songs sound better in the club. That's true. That's true. But that's because of where the state of hip hop is in too. And that's also is not completely controlled by us. You see what I'm saying? That goes to what hit on to the Illuminati thing. You see, it's not the Illuminati. You see what I'm saying? It's the powers that be. It's the people who really control in the industry. Because you you don't have me and you owning the stuff that makes stuff move in the industry. You know what I'm, stuff, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about they can break an artist overnight that nobody never heard of that's on that mumble rap stuff because but, they got the tools to do that. Yeah, but whose fault you is that? Now, let's, be, let's be real about it. I, and, I, think and, that's, I think that's somewhat our fault because we have pioneers that are billionaires like the Kanye Wests, like the Jay-Zs, like the uh, Puff Daddies, who are, who are like the... Uh, 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 the uh, Dr. Dre's and and these guys are not willing to 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 come together as forces and, and, and create something for uh, uh for for hip hop in a way to where we could cultivate it they, because they at the us. end of the day they they still got money enough to do it but they're not doing it because they care more about themselves than they do about the culture. They're gatekeepers. Well, you call them gatekeepers, but I'm telling you what they ain't gonna do is spend money together and try to help the the culture. Because they can't. Why? They got a boss. Who is their boss? Illuminati. <laughs> oh, I get it. I, I just don't know about the Illuminati thing. White people don't talk about Illuminati. You ever noticed? Because to them, it ain't no Illuminati. They spend that only ones, amongst them. Only ones speak amongst, about Illuminati amongst them is them is just Jews and Europeans and stuff. So they don't care about you the take Illuminati. take that what you will. They just getting money. They getting money. Yeah, they getting it. They getting it all right. Off our back. 
But I think that's a lot of our own fault as well. No, I, I definitely agree with you. <laughs> so, how can people get a hold of you? I don't know where the conversation went. <laughs> I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. At Always Bello. That's Always Bello with a Z. Always with a Z. B E double L O. You know, that's how you get in touch with me. You know, anywhere like that. And like I say, the music is on all streaming platforms. Got a project called Goodfellas and a project called The Young Die Young out now on all streaming platforms. And I got music with my group ANS, Always Yen or Something. Survival Tactics, other projects on all st streaming platforms right now. So, y'all go tap in. Hey, man, check it, man. We love you, brother. Already, we love you, too. Hey, man, Bello. Always Bello, man. It's been a pleasure, man. Peace. And that's another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.